This is video number two for Excel module one in the Shelley Cashman book on Office 365. We're going to pick up on page 1-26, entering a formula using the keyboard. And we want to go down to B19. Now I have zoomed in a little bit here, so B19 isn't visible. So I'm going to go to my zoom slider down here in the lower right hand corner. I'm going to slide out a few times. Now let's go to B19. Click in cell B19. And we're going to put in a formula. This time we're going to type in the formula. I want to take what's in B6 up here and I want to subtract the total down here to find the net. So formula starts with an equal sign. And you can either type B6 or you can just go up here and click on it. Minus. So I'll click the hyphen or type the hyphen. Click on B17. And notice when you type in a formula, each element in the formula is color coded. So you can see which item it refers to on the sheet. So B6 is blue, it's going to refer to the blue item up here. B17 is red, so it's going to refer to the red item up here. It makes it easier for you to avoid mistakes. So go ahead and hit the Enter key. You should get the number 9125. Now we're going to copy this formula all the way across. It'll copy just like the total did up here and the total did up here. So if it's referring to the number, let me see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 cells up minus the number that is two cells up, then if I copy it, it's going to do the exact same thing. It's going to go 13 up, 2 up, subtract them in the column that I'm in. So anytime you want to copy a formula, you select the cell that has the formula in it. So just click on it. Go to the lower right hand corner and get your fill handle. That's for copying. When you get the black skinny plus sign, click and drag. And we're going to copy the formula all the way to column N. It's always a good idea to just to check on some of these, make sure they got copied correctly. So you can double click and you can look at the formula. And it'll also show you the highlighted cells up above, which makes it real easy to find the numbers that the formula is using. Now I'm in editing mode here. So anything I do now is going to be editing what's in this cell. I don't want to edit what's in here. So the, what I have to do before I go on and do anything else, I got to make sure I hit the escape key. So I'm going to hit escape right now. And now I'm back to normal view and I'm not editing anything anymore. Now we're going to save our project. Let's skip over to page 1-28. This is exactly the same as it was in Word. Go to your file tab. Do save. First time you're saving a document, it doesn't matter whether you do save or save as. So we're just going to do a save. If it hasn't been given a name, let's browse. And I'm going to put this on my desktop as I have been with everything. So let's go to desktop. It's going to give me a default name of book two. You may get book one or some other number in there, but we don't want that. So we're going to type over it. Name of the file is going to be Fran Gold Real Estate Budget. It's automatically going to put .xlsx on the end. So it gets saved as an Excel file. Go ahead and click on Save. So now we're going to look at formatting the worksheet. We're on page 1-30. There's a little explanation there of what we're going to do and a picture of how it's going to look when we get done at the bottom of page 1-31. We're going to skip over now to actually modifying the worksheet. So we're going to look at page 1-33. Click on cell A1 to make it the active cell. So here's cell A1. We're going to do some formatting we're going to apply a style to this so a style we've got a styles box right here styles group from this end to this end style is a collection of formatting characteristics so if we click on the down arrow here the one we're looking at this time is going to be title so title is a particular font it's calibri it looks like it's a particular size it's a, it's a color let's go ahead and click on that so it is not Calibri, it's Calibri light. So the lines are a little bit skinnier when you get the light version of Calibri. It's a little bit taller. It's going to be 18 points tall and it's going to be kind of a dark blue color here. Now we're going to do the monthly estimates. So turn over to page 1-34. We're going to click on cell A2 and make that the active cell. This time we're not going to use a style. 
we're going to use our own font. So let's go here, click on the down arrow in our fonts list, and we want Arial Narrow. So go ahead and click on Arial Narrow, which I think is kind of an ugly font, but that's the one he wants. We are going to make both of these cells bold. So you can do it like he says in the book and click on A1 and go to bold, click on A2 and go to bold, or you can select them both and click on bold, or you can also do Control-V to do it from keyboard. Let's go to page 1-36. We're going to make this a little bit bigger. Currently it is 11 points. We want to make it 16 points. So go to your font size drop down list up here and go to 16 and click on 16. Now we're going to change some font colors. So we're going to go sell A1 again. And the color we're going to make this is green accent six. Our font colors are up here in the font group, which goes from right this, from this bar right here to this bar over here. Click on the down arrow and the color we want is called green accent six. You pause the mouse over it, green accent six shows up. Go ahead and click on that. We're also going to apply the same color to A2. So once I've selected that, you notice now I've got green accent six is the default color here. So if I click on that, it will make that green accent six as well. So if you're using, applying the same color a number of times in a row, you don't have to go find it every time. It'll remember the last color. And all you gotta do is click on the A button up there. Let's turn to page 1-38. And what we wanna do is we would like to have this, this will look a little nicer if this is centered over columns A through N. So to center something, we need to select the cells that we want to center it over. So let's select with a big white plus sign, select everything from A1 to N1. Do not use the skinny black plus sign. If you do, you get something you really don't want. It copies every that same thing to every one of those cells. Let's undo that. Let's go back here and now make sure you select it with a fat white plus sign. Click and drag it across to column N. What we're going to do here is we're going to merge and center that across these cells. And that is going to be an alignment option. We're on the home tab in the alignment group. We want to choose merge and center. Now there's a down arrow here. You've got some other options that are related to merging cells, but we want merge and center. You can just click on merge and center here. And now it is centered over those cells. If we change the width of those cells, it will still remain centered. We do the same thing down here with monthly estimates. Okay. So now they're both centered over the data that they describe. By the way, a minute ago I said that you could make both of these bold with one command if you wanted to. You cannot do merge and center with one command. You have to do each row separately. If I tried to do a merge and center on these two, it would take what is in A1 and it would wipe out what's in A2. So you got to do one row at a time when you're doing merge and center. Let's go to page 1-39. We're going to format some rows using cell styles. We want to go to A3. And we want to select again, make sure you use the white plus sign, not the skinny black one. Let's go to our cell styles up here. Click on the more button. The one we want is heading one. Note that you always get a live preview when you do this stuff too. So click on heading one. That is a bold font. It's a bigger size font. It is a different color and it has an underline on the cell or a border on the bottom of the cell. So your spreadsheet should now look like that. Let's go to page 1-40. We also want to center those. I shouldn't have unselected them. So let's go back and select them again. We want to center those in their cells. Go ahead and click on the center button up here. Then we want to select what's in row eight. So from A8 to N8. We want them to look exactly the same as these up here. So we can do the exact same commands or we can select these. We can go up here and use our Format Painter. Click on our Format Painter and go down here and click on Expenses. You don't even need to drag it all the way across the row. It will, since we selected all the way through column in to begin with, when we do the Format Painter, it will format the exact same range of columns down here in row eight. Now we're at number four at the bottom of page 1-40. We want to format row six and row 17 with a total style. So let's select row six and hold the control key down, select what's in row 17, and it might look like A17 is not selected now, but 
the last cell that you clicked on is always going to look a little different. So we've got both of these selected now. We want to do one of the built-in styles. One of the built-in styles is called Total. It's got a sing it's bold. It's got a single line above and a double line below. Go ahead and click on that. And that makes the totals stand out. Now let's look at the second bullet item under number four on page 1-40. We want to format the range row 19 all the way over to column N with accent 6. So I'll select that. This is a cell style. Here is accent 6. Now we're at the third bullet item. We want to do the ranges uh, of all the other remaining numbers uh, in alternate colors. We're going to do 20% for some of them and 40% for some of them. To make this a little bit easier, I think, I'm going to select all of these numbers here. Hold the control key down, select all of these numbers down here, not including the totals. And I'm going to make all of them accent 6, 20%. Okay. Then I'm going to take every other line. So row 5, hold the control key down and drag the mouse over rows 10, 12, 14, 16. Go to your cell styles up here and we want that to be 40%. Okay. Now, that looks nice. The problem with doing that is if we later on decide that we want to insert another row in here or delete one of these rows for some reason, then our rows are not going to alternate in shading like they do right now. But if you're pretty sure this is the way it's going to end up, then that's fine to do it that way. There's also a way to do that using tables that we'll talk about uh, when we get to tables. So now let's go to the top of page 1-41. We're going to start formatting some numbers. So we want the numbers in row 4. We want to format those in the accounting style. If you pause the mouse over the dollar sign up here, it says that's the accounting number format. So we're going to click on that. Watch what happens to your rows or your columns when you do. Columns automatically get wider to accommodate the wider number. So we've got a dollar sign. Accounting puts a dollar sign, a comma, and two decimal places. And it also, look at your alignment here. The alignment is a little bit different. The alignment, for some reason, it puts a little bit of extra space here on the right side. So these two numbers don't really line up anymore. Now we're going to select the numbers in the next row down here. Select all of them. We're going to format them in the comma style. Click on the comma button up here. It's exactly the same as the accounting style except for the dollar sign. I don't have any numbers. Or here's a number over 1,000. Puts the comma in, two decimal places, but no dollar sign. And it does put that little bit of extra fill on the right side of the cell here so that the numbers do line up the way you'd expect them to. Now let's select the numbers in row 6 here. And we want those to have dollar signs in them again. So click on the dollar sign button and your spreadsheet should now look like this. Now we're going to go down to row 9 and take the numbers in row 9. And we're going to format them with the accounting style. We're also going to do row 17. So I'm just going to hold the control key down, drag over those numbers. Same thing on row 19. Still hold the control key down, drag over those numbers. And we can make all of them the accounting style with one click. Then we want the ones that are in between. And the Typical way to format these is to put a dollar sign on the first row, put a dollar sign on the last row, but not put dollar signs in between. So we're going to make all of those the comma style. The number zero becomes a hyphen. And now your spreadsheet should look pretty much like the one on page 1-42. Now some of the columns are not wide enough. Uh, we chose a pretty large font here for our column headings. And so September, November, December are getting truncated a little bit. So we're going to go to column A first, and you don't need to click on the down arrow here. All you need to do is move the cursor between the A and B up here in the column headings. And when you get the two-headed arrow, double-click, and it'll make column A as wide as it needs to be to accommodate the widest entry. So the widest entry looks like office supplies, so it makes it wide enough for that and then just a little bit extra. Now we want to do that for all of the other columns, B through N. We do not have to do those one at a time. We can select all the columns B through N. 
and it doesn't matter where you go here just go between 82 columns get your two-headed arrow and double click it will make every column exactly as wide as it needs to be to accommodate the widest entry in the column now it's a little bit too big i can't see it all on the screen so i'm going to uh, zoom out a little bit okay and there's something interesting check check out that number right there um, when i was at 150 percent let's go back up to 150 percent it's visible when I drop down to 140%, I get pound signs. If you ever see pound signs someplace, it means that the column is not quite wide enough to display what's in it. Now, why was it wide enough at 150%, but it's not at 140%? Um, that's just a quirk of Excel. If you've got something that's like right up against the edge in terms of the width of the column, Depending on the zoom that you choose, you may or may not get pound signs in there. If that happens, what we can do is this. We can take all of these columns, and it looks like November might be the widest one. Let's just make everything just a little bit wider here. Okay, not a whole lot, but enough to put some extra room in there. Let's go down here, and now let's shrink it down a little bit. We'll go to 140%. Now there is enough room, so if you get the pound signs, you can just make the columns just a little bit wider rather than show you part of a number and have you look at some truncated number and actually be looking at the wrong value what excel does in that case is it just puts pound signs in there so when we see pound signs all you gotta do is make the column just a little bit wider okay let's go to page 1-44 click the name box in the formula bar and then type a3 so go up here type a3 and hit enter it will take you to a3 I don't know how useful that is. Most of the time you can just scroll and click on the cell that you want. And now there's a description on page 1-45 on some other ways to select cells. And we're not going to go over that. You can read that on your own. And this is probably a good place to stop this video.